Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffrey Bershaw, Avanti Destinations. I have uh, Christy Dixon and Evan Qualtro uh, here with me today. They are two of our travel consultants that you guys get to talk to on a regular basis, and they recently returned from Ireland, and we're going to go over the top of Ireland uh, today. So uh, a couple of images here. Uh, the one in the bottom uh, right corner uh, I've added because uh, everybody's reports coming back just uh, fond over and over about how wonderful the butter was. Uh, and I thought it was just it was just a great, you know, you get those little pieces that just make everything worthwhile. Uh, the two properties up at the top we're going to talk a little bit about later on as we go through this program. And the moment on the bottom right is a uh, sculpture. Uh, hopefully you can see the joke there. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's at the uh, Guinness Ware uh, Storehouse, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yeah. Hey! I know a lot of things. Uh, so we're going to get moving forward. If at any point in time you have any questions, uh, we will uh, answer them at the end. A uh, wonderful picture. Uh, this is not Ireland, by the way. This is uh, Edinburgh in, in Scotland's cover of our brochure. Uh, but quickly, for those of you who aren't familiar with Avanti uh, or that familiar or maybe forgotten a bit, uh, we are an FIT tour operator uh, specializing in uh, complete uh, vacations for your clients. Of course, we can do tours and transfers and stuff like that. But as you can see here, air, combinations, uh, lots of different sightseeing, some of which you'll see today. Uh, car, we're not going to cover car. A little bit of, uh, of, of rail options, uh, certainly in Ireland. Um, not really doing any small ship cruises. Those are more for Latin America. Uh, we have some in Asia, and then we have some uh, ships out in Greece uh, going around the Greek Isles. Lots of pre and post cruise. Uh, there are some, definitely some options in, in uh, Dublin and in Belfast for that. Uh, travel protection, for those of you who don't know, we do offer that. And of course, you can always add a TA fee, 15%. Uh, so that's a nice way to pad the commission uh, as well as, uh, you know, get something for your services besides the, besides the commission. Uh, anyway, we uh, offer a lot of uh, uh, options for your clients traveling to Europe. Uh, we're also in Latin America, Central South America, as well as Asia. As you can see here, lots of countries, but we're going to be focused on this country right here today. Oops, Ireland. Uh, let me go back here, just so you guys see it in the big scheme of things. Uh, we're going to start off in Dublin and then go around. I'll show you another map here in just a, a minute. Uh, but we do have some new countries, uh, Malta and Slovenia, of note. Um, the product team has spent uh, a lot of time and effort making sure that we have some high-quality hand-picked hotels. Uh, and we're always, you know, focused on uh, food, beer, wine, and so forth, uh, you know, giving your clients the uh, opportunity to have some uh, special uh, experiences while they're traveling. So over the top of Ireland, um, so, you know, just a quick kind of look at it. Um, you, know, you guys, you landed in Dublin. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't you fly? Oh, uh, what did you fly? American from yeah, okay. Portland to Chicago, okay. from Chicago to Dublin. Okay, great, mm -hmm. great, good stuff. Um, and then it was pretty easy to get out through the customs and then get on the, you guys got on the little bus, right? And then uh, headed straight up into Belfast. Right. And uh, so then they also went up over the here and then came down this way. So this is basically the area that we're going to be focused on today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, Kilkenny because it's one of our um, uh, small escorted groups uh, here at the end. But you can see basically this is the, uh, the route that we're going to take uh, and kind of highlighting some of the regions uh, that, that they saw. A Celtic adventure, I think, is the you know a good example of, of how to combine uh, the Republic of Ireland uh, and uh, Northern Northern Ireland uh, with Dublin, the uh, capital of Republic of Ireland, and Belfast, the capital of uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, you know, and you know we've got uh, Gabby here as well, but she you know she worked pretty hard in getting all this together. This is what a lot of people uh, would do if they're going to combine these two. This would actually be a great uh, pre and post cruise as well. Uh, option to kind of experience more. Uh, certainly we could add uh, Scotland or Wales uh, into this too. So just something to think about for your clients traveling there. Uh, but so we went from landing in Dublin up into to Belfast. And so Christy, what, you had some really great comments as far as Belfast. What were the impressions of, of Belfast for you? Uh, Belfast was fascinating. It was, um, I mean, I know, I think a lot of people 
mental image of Belfast is of a city that has that had violence in the past. But yeah. one of the reasons for going up there was see that it's it's really a um, vibrant, modern, gorgeous city. Yeah. That the you know violence is in the past, and they get there's a lot of great art. There's a lot of great architecture, and yeah. the history that's there is is really amazing. It's impressive. Yeah, you love this m mural, Evan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what what's going on here? Gosh, what is going on there? So this is just on the side <laughs> of a building. It's a you know it's historic, but also cultural in the different ways that uh, are life in Belfast. Well, uh, so yeah, with Belfast murals are a huge part of that city, and some of them are fun and fanciful like this, and a lot of them are very historic and talk about the troubles and you know the history there in the last half of the 20th century. Um, which are called but, the Troubles. Yes, which are called, <laughs> quote, unquote, the Troubles. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, murals are everywhere there, uh, very, very beautiful and interesting. And, like, no graffiti. People take them pretty seriously. That's good. It's not like it is in Portland sometimes. Uh, so you guys had an opportunity to go to Titanic Belfast, uh, kind of a, you know, a, a museum of sorts, but it's very interactive and pretty high-tech, too, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, on that right there, that's the uh, you kind of go through the history of the making of it, correct? Yeah, the focus of the of it is on the creation of the Titanic yeah. more so than what happened, you know, yeah. in the ocean. So yeah. because the people of Belfast were so integral to, you know, the the building of the Titanic, so many people were employed there, and it really shaped a lot of what happened in Belfast around that time. So it shaped the city to it. Yeah, exactly, and that's a big part of the Titanic experience is tying in the history of Belfast as a shipbuilding center during yeah. that time of yeah. history. Yeah, which it still is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Award-winning. Award-winning. The, the Titanic Belfast mm -hmm. is award-winning. Yeah, top top uh, attraction in Europe this year. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. See, see, we get Gabby here. She knows everything. Yeah, over a million. And then you guys hung out in some pubs. Uh, well, we can't go to Ireland and not go to a pub. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're everywhere else, they're very different in Ireland. You guys had a pretty unique experience as well in one, right? What, what, is, what is the, why would someone want to go to a pub other than to drink beer? To meet the people. Yeah. 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 Um, I find you know, people in Ireland are extremely friendly and very willing to talk, even yeah. if you're a total stranger. Yeah. And um, it's a great way just to get to know people and to really feel the culture while you're there. Yeah, as soon as they find out you're a foreigner, they just latch on to you, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Especially <laughs> American. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Christy hit it uh, on the head. It's the, the people in general are the reason to go to Ireland. And, um, I mean, we were there a couple hours, and we just went across the street from our hotel and went into this uh, pub. I think it's like the second oldest in Belfast called the Crown Liquor Saloon, and immediately people are just coming up to us, talking to us, buying us beers. I mean, it's like you can't, um, you know, you can't stay alone if you're in Ireland. You're going to meet friends. <laughs> yeah. if, you stay, if you do end up going to Belfast, the, the Crown Liquor Saloon, even if you don't drink, it's worth visiting just for the art, the interior architecture alone. It's, it's beautiful, the woodwork, the tile work, it's, it's super fascinating. And if you go around back at night, there's also some really excellent music. Oh, wow. And which hotel did you guys stay in in Belfast? The Europa. Europa. That's right across the street. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. You guys like the Europa? Yeah. Europa? Europa? Europa. Europa. <laughs> we're, we're in Ireland, not Asia. Yeah, yeah. It's great history there. And uh, yeah. one of my favorite things is that they have uh, Bushmills whiskey with porridge at the breakfast buffet. Oh, so that's right. A cash of whiskey and oh, porridge the there. Irish way. Yeah. Day. That's a good way to start a yeah. vacation. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so you guys, uh, on the way, uh, you're kind of uh, going to, now we're kind of headed to uh, Derry, London Derry, mm -hmm. um, and you guys stopped at the Ballygally Castle, which is uh, part of the Manor House program that we have here, um, and did you guys get to eat food here too? We no? had um, we had tea yeah. and scones uh, oh, when we arrived, so oh, which was nice. a very traditional afternoon yeah. snack. Yeah, yeah. So what did you guys think of this property overall? It was nice. Uh, it was a good combination, like a lot of Irish properties, of uh, historic, uh, well-maintained, but also quite modern. And um, you know, it's clear they've done renovations and that it's uh, very well put together. Um, and you can see in the picture you have the older castle part, but then the larger building 
where it has extra rooms and the dining areas. Um, and quite an interesting history there, too. It's um, one of the most haunted places in Ireland, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Always good to know. I've had requests for uh, actually for people to, to stay in the properties before. Yeah. Amazingly, so uh, I don't know if I can do it. But also, um, I also like this for family because this thing in it's in the Catholic property. You know, we saw a lot of kids there, and we seemed to really enjoy that there was they were in the castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just had to do a little bit of uh, communication. Some people are having some folks with uh, or having some issues with audio, so. Um, get moving here. Uh, and then on the way as well, you guys stopped by the Bushmills Inn mm -hmm. and uh, had, I love your guys' story, <laughs> lunch. A, a, a buffet, mm -hmm. but but not really lunch. It was like you know five meals in one, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, was like, it was like Christmas dinner. It was, it was, there was turkey and ham and beef and pork and yeah. I don't know, there was probably venison and all the meat. All the meat. It was a buffet. And some vegetables. Of meat. Uh, yeah, if you want to. Know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, the vegetables. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, but, uh, you know, wonderful property, also part of the Manor House program, mm -hmm. uh, but you guys got to inspect the hotel as well? Uh, yes, I think we wandered around it a bit, and you'll notice the American flag up there. Yeah, why it is, is that? It is in Ireland. Um, that is because at any given point, whatever the, whatever uh, guests are from the furthest away country, they'll put that flag up. Oh, nice. So at the That's time, it cool. was American. It was, yeah. Apparently, a, a lot of time. Yeah. The US flag. Oh, <laughs> flag up there. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but as you can see, it's a you know it's a it's a good solid uh, property for for folks that for your clients that are going up north, um, they could definitely uh, stay here as well. It had a real warmth to it. Yeah. And it is within walking distance of the old Bushmills distillery. Mm -hmm. I think five minute walk or something. So uh, in in case that's you know up your alley. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that why it's called the Bush Mills? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can just walk to the the factory and you yeah. have a, a little little sip and yeah. and then walk back, kinda. Yeah. Good. Good. Double back maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, and then you guys went a little bit farther up north and then went to the Giants Causeway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you know a lot of people will put this into their their clients' program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think. And one of the things that you said that I thought was interesting is, uh, Evan, was that it's just, it's not, you can look at the pictures, but it's not the same. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd seen lots and lots of pictures of it and always thought it looked very interesting, but it's one of those things where you look, oh, that's kind of these odd, you know, shapes of the rocks, and that was pretty cool. And then you go there and it really does blow you away. Um, it's it's just uncanny. Like, it, there's nothing like it in nature, uh, these shapes. It's the octagonal, I believe. Of the um, hexagonal, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> corrected here, um, of the rocks there. Someone and, uh, was paying attention, right? Yeah, um, and there, it's also quite large. I mean, this isn't one tiny little spot where it is. It, it's spread out, and you can explore, and uh, it's very interactive. Families are all clambering all over the rocks. Um, you got to be careful with the ocean right there, but it is definitely a must see if you're going anywhere near it and if you're going to Northern Ireland absolutely it's one of the, definitely a highlight for me cool yeah it was that uh, it's good like they you can there's a road you need to go to to walk to go down there and you can walk the road and it's a really mm -hmm. nice walk but if you have anyone who has any mobility issues they also have a shuttle that runs from the parking area all the way down to the Giants Causeway so everyone can yeah. come down and see it as well okay that's good to know so it's an open for everyone, and definitely mm -hmm. kids would have a blast. Oh, yeah, they're oh, loving yeah. it. And yeah. we sell day tours from Dublin and Belfast that they can mm -hmm. do, actually. And coming very soon, there will be a small group tour, day tour from mm -hmm. Dublin uh, okay. to the Giants Causeway. It's limited to 16 people per, per tour, which I think would be really nice. But they're going to see other things as well yeah. along the way, yeah, right? Yeah, the, the, the one from Dublin will stop in Belfast. So mm -hmm. There is a stop in Belfast before yeah. going on. A little tour of Belfast. Causeway. And then uh, heading west and a little bit south, uh, you guys were right at the um, the what, that uh, uh, shoot. I'm going to Derry and London Derry. 
Um, you know, I think that it was pretty interesting what you guys were saying with regard to to this city. It's got you know, it's in Northern Ireland. It's got a lot of history. Uh, you, you, know, you were really blown away by the the walls and yeah. stuff and the architecture. Um, but I think you said a few other things as well that I thought were uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. Why would someone want to go here? For the history, yeah. um, and and it's gorgeous. It's um, it's a beautiful the city is a beautiful blend of old and the new, and you see it come together. And what really made the city come alive was when we did the walking tour, our guide Jarvin just, he did a spectacular job of really bringing the history out and showing you why you would want to be in Londonderry, mm -hmm. Gary Londonderry. So you would want to, to do a, a, a tour? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, you really, um, and I think a lot of people don't know much about this town. I didn't until I went, but if you, I mean, the name, it's very odd why does it have two names, Derry, London Derry, what's the deal? And I think that alone encapsulates a lot about the town itself in that um, its history for a long periods of time, it was torn in half in terms of the, you know, the um, Irish nationalists and then the British loyalists um, who referred to it as London Derry and the Irish referred to it as Derry. And um, that is a lot of the history there, both in the 17th century and in the 20th century with the Troubles. Mm -hmm. um, it was a flashpoint for a lot of the conflicts. Um, and it's really interesting now, same thing in Belfast, to be there and have them talk. I mean, they, they love talking about the history. They're not at all ashamed or wanting to kind of hide it under the rug. It's a very important part of how they came together to what they are now, which is a very united people and culture yeah. and yeah. town. And they're very, both, you know, proud of their history, but they want to make sure that people understand that they've moved past it and they really see themselves as an example of how to solve conflicts and live together in peace. And that's really, it's, you know, it's something you have to see and talk to the people to really um, experience. But yeah. it's fascinating. And anybody who likes history, um, especially the British Isles, that's a great town to visit. And if you haven't figured it out now, Evan loves history. <laughs> <laughs> and like our guy, he said, he goes, people call it dairy and people call it London dairy, but you can never go wrong if you call it legendary. So, uh, <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a good, that's yeah, good, that, that's a good one. Yeah. The guys are good for that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then you guys went and had uh, dinner, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. the Beach Hill Country yeah. House. Yeah. This is outside of, uh, of uh, Derry, London Derry. Uh, it is also a part of our Manor House uh, program, uh, too. Uh, you guys had wonderful food here. Oh, yeah, we have wonderful food everywhere. I mentioned earlier that go to Ireland for the people. Go there for the food, too. <laughs> it is uh, incredibly underrated. I had heard good things. You know, the okay, Ireland food, sure. It is just amazing food, very high quality, whether you're going to a high-end restaurant or a place like this or just a regular pub, you're going to get fantastic local food. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Beach Hill is certainly one of our best meals there. You're shaking oh. your... Oh, yeah, no, the, the food was wonderful. Um, we had a curry bread there that was fantastic and... Uh, and the best pork belly I think I've ever had. Really? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah the beach hill, the, the food was excellent. But, but Evan's right, and throughout Ireland, you don't think about Ireland as a food destination, but you should. Yeah. The, um, <clears throat> the soil and the grasses and the sustainable agriculture practices there, they raise, you know, basically what would be considered very, like, local food here. I mean, Ireland's not huge to begin with. It's the size of one of our small states, but they're, you know, they're, animal and raising practices and their farming practices um, make the base ingredients just shine and that comes through in all the food that you eat. That's what makes the butter taste so good too. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. Happy cow. <laughs> Happy cow. Mm -hmm. I had the, actually had the opportunity to stay here once uh, and it's a solid four-star uh, classic uh, uh, interiors uh, too, uh, but it's also got a bit of history. Uh, as well. So they housed uh, in World War II Marines mm -hmm. uh, and a part of the of the state is dedicated to that to its history. Uh, so it's definitely an interesting place to stay uh, and fantastic food and a wonderful bar with an atrium as well. So kind of a pub feel. It's got a nice fireplace. Uh, so then you guys were Going down south from uh, Derry, London, Derry, uh, and uh, this is a focal point for you all. Um, and Mount Falcon, uh, also part of our um, uh, Manor House program. 
so you know these guys got to stay in some of the of the, the nicest properties, uh, and you'll see here in a minute that, that they stayed in one of the nicest, uh, certainly. Uh, but so I think that the, just the being able to you know either do a, a self drive would be doable. You could even arrange something privately, couldn't you? Yeah, we do. We do get a lot of requests for private drivers, um, which is you know, totally doable. We have a really great ground operator in Ireland that they can take care of a lot of stuff for us. Um, I was curious, I mean, because I know you guys didn't drive, but, you know, the distances in between, uh, you know, from spot to spot, how much would you pay? Was it maybe a couple of hours driving a day uh, or maybe three hours or so in between uh, locations, do you remember? Um, yeah, somewhere like that. I think that it's easy to look at a map of Ireland and think everything is super close and won't take much time, but these are you know, mostly rural areas that we visited and uh, winding roads through countryside. It takes you a long time to get from place to place, and I always emphasize that when people want to spend one night here, one night there, to really slow down, take your time, because first of all, you're going to stop all the time to take pictures because we're focusing on all the destinations we went to, but half of the fun was just driving there and stopping and taking pictures and learning the history of wherever we were driving through. So the, simply the countryside, taking your time, driving through, um, and really enjoying it is, is part of the reason to go at all. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you guys were part of the coastal route, the mm -hmm. northern coastal route. Um, were there a lot of... Um, uh, signage, like signs that would say, like, you know, stop here for certain things, like, because I know with the Wild Atlantic Way, they uh, made really a very good point of actually, um, you know, showing the different um, attractions and sites to stop at. Mm -hmm. Did you notice a lot of that around that area as well, or, um, you know, anything that struck you as far as, like, it's very easy, and it's easy to stop off and, and look at things, or... Yeah, the signage was, was pretty clear. I mean, you would see signs. You would see signs for um, for some attractions, and of course, places, things like the Wild Atlantic Way has its own signage to follow along the coast to make yeah. that easier. And um, the number of signs was actually nice. I did pay attention to that as we were driving through. Um, all the signs, the road signs, are in both English and in Irish. Yeah, Irish. Gaelic. So. Um, yeah, it's on kilometers, so you know you'll have to get a little used to that. But everything is also in English, so very easy to understand and um, not not much of a challenge. I would recommend if you can drive over there using a car because you're going to be able to access and see so much more. But I can understand people hesitating because it is driving on the other side of the road, mm -hmm. which can be a challenge. Yeah, but you're also in the car and you're on the right side of the car rather than the left side of the car. It, it does make it makes the transition a lot easier. So, uh, but the property itself was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Mount Falcon is a great example of the Manor House program, I think, because each one's completely different and unique. You know, different numbers of rooms, different experience entirely. But I mean, as you see, it, it looks very much like a castle, and um, it feels like it. The rooms were very large and um, very classic and traditional without appearing to be stuffy. Um, and the host uh, and the experience we had at dinner there and just the tour around the property um, was very memorable, very fantastic service. There's a wonderful um, picture of Evan on the right there. <laughs> I'll back in there. But as you can see, beautiful grounds. Uh, most of these pictures uh, actually come from uh, these folks who uh, uh, on their on their trip. So. Um, I think you know this really says a lot to me uh, with regard to the the grounds itself or the estate. Uh, but also, you guys had a fantastic meal here too. More and more food. <laughs> yeah, nonstop. <laughs> and some was that Irish wine? <laughs> I don't think so. But uh, we may have had a little bit of an Irish whiskey tasting that night. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and then you guys were talking earlier about the Wild Atlantic Way. Uh, you know, you got to spend some time along the coast, uh, the wild coast, which truly is. I mean, it's, you know, uh, I think you, you were, Chrissy, you had a lot of, of uh, you were in awe of this area. Oh, I love, right? I love the coast. I mean, we live yeah. here in Portland, and we're very close to, you know, a very gorgeous and wild coast here, which I do love, and, I mean, it's beautiful. But the, the Irish coast up in the northern part is just stunning. 
the, uh, I mean, be, be prepared. Bring some hair ties, ladies. The <laughs> wind will kill your hair, so tie that up. But, um, bring a hat. But, yeah, bring a hat and dress a little warm. But the way the wind would whip the, uh, the ocean into, into foam and blow, it would blow the foam up the cliff walls, and then it would rain down on you like sea snow. It was spectacular. You have to experience it. <laughs> so it was wild and, and windy, but yeah. beautiful. Very dramatic. And the, and yeah. the greens that are in, in this area are, are pretty unusual, too. It's bright. Yeah. Green is a place that I've seen. Yeah. But to explain the Wild Atlantic Way, though, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's one of the longest continuous driving routes, I think, uh, it's certainly in Ireland. It goes all along the West Coast. Yeah. Starting yeah. from, I believe, County Mayo uh, yep. down to Cork. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's very interesting. You guys didn't do the whole thing, but you did a, a, a small section of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, it's a... Uh, you could spend three or four weeks doing it. Certainly. Easy. Yeah. Certainly. Easy. Um, and you know, you've got a um, we've got a program here uh, called the Wild Atlantic Way, uh, going you know basically along that northern route, uh, Dublin, uh, up into those you can see here the um, uh, Donegal and then uh, County Mayo, uh, and then going down along the coast uh, all the way basically down to to Cork. Uh, so you're going in the Ring of Kerry, and, and uh, they, they could even add in Dingle or something if they wanted to. Uh, yeah. Certainly the Dingle Peninsula, uh, Galway, um, or outside of Galway, um, depending on what people want to do. And if you're doing the self-drive, that if you go back to that last slide, the zigzag that we're standing under is the, that's the sign of the Wild Atlantic Way on the mm -hmm. sign. So you so can never see, get lost. Yeah, when you see the blue and white zigzag, you know you're on the Wild Atlantic Way. Plus, if you're along the coast, you know. You're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, don't take a right. Ocean long right. Yeah, all right. If you don't see the ocean, you've drained too much. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so there's a couple of different uh, images here as well. The bottom is probably one of the everybody's uh, big and clips and more. Um, but, you know, this is a good, good solid 10-day uh, program. Um, so, you know, lots to see and do. And, and you can mix this up uh, any way you want, uh, but this is just our recommendations going basically all the way around, uh, coming up once you get to Cork and then go back up into, into Dublin. Uh, and then the uh, Coupe de Gras, if you will, uh, uh, Ashford Castle. And we always focus on the food. We're a lot of foodies around here. We're all nodding our head going, God, this would be really nice to have for lunch. Uh, but, uh, you know, five-star uh, you know, uh, property, you know, top of the top as far as the castle uh, options are concerned in, in Ireland. And you guys got to stay there. Yeah. Lucky devils. What was the yeah. thing that, first thing that came to your mind when you guys pulled up? Oh gosh, well, it's just opulent and uh, granted, the most castle-y place I've ever been. <laughs> like, That's the name Cast you think like, Castle. Oh, <laughs> castle, and that is what you think. I mean, it's like knight in shining armor type. Castle. And the water goes all the way around. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's, yeah, it does. It, does. it has a bridge. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's completely grand and magnificent. Um, well maintained as well because it is very historic. It's definitely everything. There's all these old oil paintings, and there's literally uh, like a set of armor, like the, of a knight, right there in the lobby. Um, so definitely historic feel, but very, very, very well maintained. Yeah. And classic interiors, as far as castly interiors. Very, yeah. very much so. It you know for anyone for wanting of to chintzy to a lot of filigree and stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. Well, it's no? very, very ornate. ornate okay, ornate is a good word, word. But also warm. It, yeah. um, there is a little warmth inside that yeah. made you feel, even though you were in a spectacular place, that you also belonged there, which was super nice. Um, you know, they were, in the words of, the, of everyone that worked there as well, I mean, when we were at dinner, I was fascinated with this seed cracker. It was, I would never seen anything like that before, and I was so fascinated, and the, uh, the manager, she actually brought the chef out, or the ba her head baker out, and you know, and then I told her how much I enjoyed it, and she went back and wrote down the, typed up the recipe, and gave it to us. I was like, here, go make this at home. It oh, was cool. It was, I mean, really lovely touches like that yeah. is the thing I think that really sets the personal, heart. very personal service, even though you're staying in a five star castle. Exactly, exactly. That's good to know. And for those who are maybe a little more price conscious and they can't do the five star, there is a lodge at Ashford Castle, which is a 
four-star property mm -hmm. on the estate, not the castle itself, but it's actually on the ground. Nearby. And it allows you um, access, of course, to, to the castle. I think that, and that's where we stayed was yeah. actually at the lodge. We, we didn't stay in the castle proper, although we spent quite a bit of time in that evening at the castle. Um, but the lodge, I highly recommend it. It's, um, do do know though it's uh it's not in the castle decor it's a little more other uh, decor is a little different at the lodge but it's it's gorgeous and it's mm -hmm. very well appointed and again the same kind of good service that you have there that you mm -hmm. have all over the entire estate. So uh, and then you you only spent one night at the lodge. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then you went down south along the coast and then into Galway for. Mm -hmm. Afternoon or late afternoon? Yeah, I think we had a long lunch. All yeah. of our meals were long, um, but like yeah. an hour or two. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh yeah, so. lunch was at least an hour, if not mm -hmm. more. Yeah, but yeah, in Galway we went way to, to travel. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a uh, um, re a replica of a Clada College uh, cottage, uh -huh. and um, saw some of the old time techniques that they used to like to um, what's the word I'm looking for. With wood, <laughs> whittle, whittle, yeah, 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 to um, yeah, to like carve. whittle carve wood down into things like chair legs and mm -hmm. how they did use the um, how they used the rushes to make the roofs and so that was a really fascinating little stop in Galway. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they also have you know you can go to Bunratty Castle nearby as well. And that's closer to Shannon. Yeah, but yeah, mm -hmm. Cliffs of Moore is really close. Uh -huh. um, the um, Aran Island. Um, yeah. A lot of people will do tours of the Finnish Moors, the, the yeah. most common one. Yeah. You could do a, a day trip from that. And um, it's got great, I like the Galway up in there as well, and I, mm -hmm. I really like the culture. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of musical and food tours as well that Correct. we're starting yeah. to really yeah. expand that um, yeah. that kind of culture there. Yeah. And of course, great pubs as well. Uh, so uh, Classic Ireland is, uh, you know, our uh, kind of a, a you know, the essentials to a degree. Uh, probably the most uh, popular combinations, you know, Dublin, uh, Galway, uh, Killarney, uh, going down to the the Ring of Kerry, uh, and then the and then then Lim coming back up to Limerick. The idea being that people would fly out of of Shannon, uh, right? Uh, they could add Drummolin Castle, which is you know pretty popular uh, as well. Uh, before people fly out, it's pretty near the airport, um, and you know. You've done. Have you done the Beer and Visitor Center? Uh, uh, beer and I yeah. haven't been to the visitor. I've been. I've driven through the Beer and. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also uh, close to more. Usually yeah. those kind of two go hand in hand. Yeah. So they kind of drive through the Beer to get to uh, yeah. the close to more generally. Yeah. Um, but they have a really nice informative uh, a visitor center. But it's a it's a really uh, biodiverse region where they have you know some really fantastic. It's uh, amazing forest, geography uh, as well. Yeah, it, looks, it really is. It looks, if you have access to Google at some point, look it up. The Burren, it's basically, it looks like lunar landscape. It's another worldly yeah, experience. Yeah, very much so. Whereas going up north, like these guys from Mount Falcon going down to uh, uh, Galway, you could have gone to uh, Connemara, which is, you know, spectacular as well. Everybody wants to go to the Ring of Kerry or the Dingle Peninsula, but the Connemara is, uh, is impressive too. And all of Ireland's impressive. Well, who are we kidding? Uh, so, uh, Irish National Stud, this is kind of going from Galway to Dublin. Uh, you guys had a, a stop uh, here. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about the experience. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's all-encompassing to a degree. This is a huge estate, uh, well known for uh, uh, some you know, racing horses as well as jumpers, uh, uh, internationally renowned, uh, really. Uh, but you start off with the horses. Yeah, our, our tour was focused mostly on the horses. We didn't have as much time to go oh, visit okay. the gardens, okay. but the grounds itself was spectacular. I mean, yeah. very, very well cared for, and yeah. um, just learning about the, because um, I, I didn't know much about the Irish National Stud before we went there. I had no yeah. idea that Ireland had such a large presence in the uh, in the racehorse community. Yeah. But, you know, if you, if you love horses at all, or it's, one, it's, great one for, it's great for kids. The kids would love it. There's, the ponies out there, and there's the, the big thoroughbreds. And, yeah, yeah. Um, the best time to go is also in spring, because that's when mm -hmm. they get a lot of the foals. Yeah. Um, and they, I, I, when I went, it was right around in April, and they're 
I mean, they had had like I think ten births in a day, and I oh, yeah. see one day old baby bulls that were yeah. just really, really. I hate to use the word, but they were cute. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Why do you hate the word? Use that word. Well, overused. <laughs> oh, okay. but, uh, it's uh, it's a great place to go. I mean, you can easily spend a half day there with combining the actual course. Um, you know, part of it with the Japanese gardens, which are really beautiful. They, they have a really nice cafe that you can stop and have lunch Correct. at. Correct. Yeah. Um, and um, there was one other thing I was going to mention. Oh, the names of the horses. I mean, if anything, <laughs> if you go yeah. just to look at some of the names on the stalls, it's just fantastic. You know, there's some really, really good Clever stuff. names. Yeah, very, yeah. very clever. Yeah. Well, there's rules as far as naming a horse and the year that they're born and all of that. So. Uh, all right, so uh, Ireland, uh, ancient East. Uh, this is kind of a combination uh, going down to the uh, the eastern, southeastern uh, area of Ireland. We're not going to cover too much of that today, other than the slides, really. Uh, but uh, this is, you know, you brought this on like two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is actually based on your experience of going down in this region, if I'm not mistaken. I did. Yeah. Sure of the, the Ireland ancient. Uh, route and uh, fantastic. I mean, some of the highlights for me were the National Stud and also uh, New Grange uh, and the Brunoin yeah. Valley area, which is yeah. um, where they have a lot of these um, tombs, uh, above ground tombs uh, that were built. Uh, they're older than the Egyptian pyramids. Yeah. Uh, so um, plenty of history there. Um, and it's a Viking history. It's lots of Viking history yeah, as well. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. I mean, Dublin and a lot of those places, Waterford, they were all settled by Vikings. Yeah. Learn a lot of that uh, that history as well. Yeah, yeah. and then, uh, oops, I, I did want to talk. I'm missing a slide here. I thought, but anyway, we'll see see what happens. Uh, so you guys ended up in uh, Dublin, uh, and um, and let me talk a little bit of this guy on the right here. Someone took this picture. Is that you? I think it was Oscar Wilde. Isn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. took a little stroll one evening into. Marion, the Marion Square. Marion Square, yeah. Visit yeah. yeah. old Oscar. Yeah, you can do a literary tour here, uh, but um, I just threw that in there because I thought it was a good picture of of, uh, of the sculpture. Uh, and then you have the Hay Printing Bridge uh, and going into uh, you know, old Old Town Dublin uh, here. What you know, some of the things that you guys did. You definitely everybody has to go to the Guinness Storehouse, yeah. so you did that. Oh. Yeah, the experience there was, was fantastic. Um, you know, you learned a lot about the process, and we were talking about this yesterday. We highly recommend the um, the um, VIP. The VIP. Yeah. yeah. The connoisseur experience. Yeah, the experience. So what do you get out of the connoisseur experience? So they have this great little bar there that they only use for that. And it's just really beautiful, dark wood, dimly lit. And you go in there, and then they um, not only give you tastings and explain the history of Guinness and all the other beers they make, because it's not just the stout, uh, but then you also get to learn how to pour the perfect pint. And they show you the proper way. There's the whole, you know, whole thing about it. And it takes uh, a while. Yeah, it does. You have to have patience. <laughs> That's the main thing. And uh, and foam is good. Foam is your friend. Um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, very. If you're into beer, your clients are into beer at all. Um, it's a very wonderful experience for sure. I think my favorite part was during the tour, I I always personally have always heard people talk about, oh, the Guinness in Ireland is so much better on tap than anywhere else. You know, what is it? Is it the water? Is it something about it? And without even asking, the tour guide provided the answer when he was talking about all the millions of gallons they brew each day. And then he said, okay, and then we test them all. We keep the best for Ireland, and we ship everything else out. Yeah. And I just thought that was the greatest. And that's why. They keep the best for the locals, which they should. So you guys are holding up a pint here, and that's up at the yeah. top of the gravity, yeah, bar. gravity, gravity bar. bar. With great views. It is. Even if you don't drink, going to the Guinness Storehouse is worth it for the view of Dublin alone. It's mm -hmm. spectacular. 365-degree views of the city. Yeah. And if it's sunset and the sun's out, it's even better. Yeah. Nice. And then more pubs. Is that all you guys did? Eat and went to pubs? I was just doing our job. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the brazen head, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But you guys also went to a couple more as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the snake fins, the brazen head is its history. 
the oldest pub in Ireland. Oh, the first see. probably about five or six right. oldest yeah. pubs in Ireland. Well, but it's definitely, it's like 1200s? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like 1256 it's, or something. It's insanely like that. old. And it's yeah. kind of fun. It's not just one pub. It's several rooms mm -hmm. and kind of, it's almost like a little maze. Yeah. There's an outdoor area. Yeah. It's like they just kind of added on over the centuries. Yeah. I mean, but how many bars could say I added on over the centuries? And, and good pub food as well. And music. And music. They do music. Yeah, Irish yeah. music is fun. Yeah. That's you, another reason do you know how to river to dance? Up, actually, I think if you enjoy music, yeah. Yeah. go to the pub for some good music. There's, There's true. live music uh, at most of the pubs we went to. And yeah. It's, yeah. Very cool. All right. So uh, since we're, you know, did some focus on the on the food, you heard me talk a little bit about the Connemara. This is, you know, kind of a taste of Ireland. Uh, this is really new. This year? Yes, 2017. Brand new. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that, there, you know, there's different ways that we can cater or, uh, uh, you know, kind of create an itinerary for, for your clients. Uh, and, you know, you can view it as a lens if someone wants, you know, uh, really a hard focus on history, uh, that's certainly doable. Uh, but in the same token, if they want to focus on the food uh, and, the, and the production uh, of, of food, uh, this is something that that they can do as well. So it's something to think about as you're as you're giving us a call or getting online. That you know, there's lots of opportunities here uh, for you to kind of bring in uh, different types of experiences uh, depending on your client's uh, interest. Uh, of course, the the one I uh, always uh, have been interested in is the is the baking. Didn't you did some baking, didn't you? No. No, you didn't no. get to do baking? I, I wish. Oh. Uh, actually, it's really nice that you got that recipe because uh, I'm always constantly looking for, for really good uh, Irish bread and, you know, just different things. I love their brown bread there. It's fantastic. Yes. And they have really, really bread. good fish uh, chowder or seafood chowder. Seafood really chowder. Good. It's fantastic. The yeah. best I've had was in Galway or yeah. just outside of Galway. Yeah. But um, as one thing I'm mentioning about this particular tour, though, is that it is seasonal. And it's seasonal. And because, uh, yeah, April, April through, through October. Yeah, and, you know, generally because there are a couple of uh, potential farm visits to the um, the sheep farm and the, the goat cheese farm, um, you know, those are, are working farms. And so, you know, it, the, the schedules on those is when they're open to the public can vary. Um, so it's always helpful to be able to have some flexibility for the package in case that is a highlight for somebody to visit. But. Cool. And, um, Gabby said she wasn't going to talk hardly at all. <laughs> no, it's great. Don't have to apologize. We're happy. Are you kidding me? Uh, so Corners of, our, of Southern Ireland, our most popular small escorted group. Correct. Maximum 16? I think, yeah, 15 or 16. Um, this is uh, actually um, popular because it sort of blends the you know uh, aspect of not having to drive but also not paying the private premium of having yeah. a private driver. But, you know, some people really enjoy traveling with, with groups, um, maybe not large groups, but this is a really small yeah, and, smaller and groups, yeah. more, more personable group. Um, but um, what's great about these groups is that they're also, they always try to do something very special in each city. So yeah. you know, something that's uh, memorable, whether it's food related or yeah. you know, culture related. So. Um, well, I mean, you know, they get to go to some more, they get to go to the Jameson Middleton distillery outside of Cork. I mean, you know, doesn't get much better than that, yeah, as far as I'm concerned. And they're they're food focused as well. Correct. Yeah. And there's um you know selected dates, uh, so you can always uh, I believe we have the dates listed yep. on, online of, yep. of when it operates. So. Yeah. And then uh, I just wanted to make a, a you know we talked a little bit about uh, the Killarney being the gateway of the Ring of Kerry, but I also want to talk about Kilkenny. Uh, it, you know, it's not that far outside of of Dublin. Um, in fact, if you have young uh, travelers. Uh, you know, they're traveling millennials or what have you. Uh, definitely, if they're going to be around on the weekend, uh, go down to Kilkenny because that's when all the Dubliners leave uh, Dublin and, and come down to this uh, small little town. It's also very historic, and, and uh, I think it's just a, a, a really great. Medieval, parts of it are, are medieval. Uh, and they you have can, a, the mile, the medieval mile. Yeah, they, yeah. Have a, they have a great castle. They do have a great castle. I forgot a, all about that. Yeah. I was just thinking about the pubs and the food. They uh, not so we don't unfortunately we don't sell those, but they do actually have also bike tours that you can take of, of the town, which are really yeah. great. Yeah. Um, and I think they just opened up also a beer um, uh, brewery there, but I can't remember the name of the company. But, um, 
They reopened it. Uh, Re they redid yeah. it. Yeah, they and redid it. Now it's open it. to the public. And I'm blanking on the name. Yeah, same here. I, I, uh, I just thought of it yesterday as well. I was like, oh, that was pretty good beer. Yeah. Uh, well, dang it. I'll follow up with that beer. Yeah. Uh, it's red. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> no, but I mean, the, the label is red. Gosh, oh, well. Dang it. Uh, uh, anyway, you can uh, give us a call, uh, find the stuff online as well, uh, and also reach us at request at avantidestinations.com. Uh, uh, hopefully you have all of that information. Uh, sounds like some of you had some uh, audio issues. Hopefully that was uh, resolved. Um, but uh, anyway, um, I've got to open up these questions. We'll get some questions here in just a second. Um, any, you know, what were your, kind of your takeaways as far as, as Dublin? You guys stayed in a couple of properties, uh, or you stayed in one property. Um, your favorite hotel? Uh, well, it depends on, you know, what kind of category. I think we saw some really good examples of each sort of level that we sell, be it three-star, four-star, and five-star properties in Dublin. And the nice thing is, you know, people always want to stay uh, in a city central hotel. And, you know, usually, and regardless of the city, we have lots of those. But in Dublin, I found it to be very compact, easy to walk around. So almost regardless of which hotel you wind up going with, you're going to be able to easily get around to the main parts of town um, and not have to worry about being far away from anything. Um, but I think, Christy, did you have a couple of hotels that you really liked? Well, in the three-star category, um, I really enjoyed the Fleet Street. Um, excellent location and super, super close to everything. And it had a, it was a little quirky on the inside. Um, mm -hmm. I would, they do have accommodations for people um, with disabilities, but at the same time, some of the hallways had stairs that kind of up and down. So I would be just aware of that. But um, really, really cute property and great price on that that I always mm -hmm. see when we're selling it. Um, right by Temple Bar, right? It is. Yeah. It is. It is right by Temple Bar. So I often recommend that one if people are really wanting to get that, that, you know, that experience yeah. down Which one there. was that again? The Fleet Street. Fleet Street. Street. Yeah, you yeah. really like that. Yeah, the pictures um, like that we have on the outside of it, I was, I was like, it's okay. And then I got inside. I was like, wow, look at this place. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Um, in the four-star category, Trinity City impressed me a lot. Um, they have recently renovated, and the the lobby area is a showstopper. Um, just really beautiful inside. And we got to tour some of the rooms. The renovations has done it well. It is a extremely solid four-star, and I wouldn't hesitate to put any of my four-star clients in that one. And, of course, you know, most five-stars, there's going to be something special about them, which is why they're a five-star, but the showstopper in Dublin was definitely the Marion. Yeah. The service there would be unmatched. So if you have clients who are going to a castle, coming from a castle, or just need a little more TLC, I wouldn't hesitate to put them um, at the Marion Hotel. And well-located. Very well located, all three of these. Yeah. And they have a great tea, afternoon tea. Oh, yes. ah, nice. Yeah, our tea, we which do. we sell, is, yeah. uh, it's actually very nice from what I hear. Mm -hmm. and I've sadly not experienced it, but you guys got to do it, right? We, well, we got to experience some of the desserts mm -hmm. um, that are done for the tea. We had uh, we had lunch at the Marion, and then afterwards we, um, we had the desserts that are served at the tea that are, um, the current ones were uh, modeled after pieces of art in the hotel itself with a little description of each. And oh, wow. even if you're not super into art, just the beauty of these tiny desserts kind of will blow you away. You didn't want to eat them? They were so beautiful? Yeah. We took a lot of pictures before <laughs> we finally gave up and ate them. <laughs> gave in. So people have some yeah. interesting questions about Dairy London Dairy. Um, and one was, is it, is it two cities? Uh, but uh, no, it's not. It's no. one city, and uh, I think Evan, you kind of talked a little bit about the history, and so uh, those that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, supporting the Irish uh, nationalist uh, during the Troubles, um, um, or even pre, pre uh, UK being uh, Northern Ireland being part of the UK, uh, it was Derry. But the Royalists, the supporters of the of the of the, of the British uh, Empire, were uh, called the Royalist, and that was Londonderry. Yeah, exactly. So, it's just two different history. names for this exact same town. Um, and I think the reason why, you know, um, generally they refer to it as 
uh, dairy, London dairy, and put both of them in there is to make everybody happy. Yeah. Basically, yeah. and just show that hey, we you know we're fine with both. Everybody's included. We yeah. didn't have to choose one side over the other. Yeah. And how far away was it from from Dublin? I mean, we guys went around the top, but you could drive right through, and I'd say it's probably about an hour and a half ish. Oh, no, I it was longer. Two and a half. Much to longer. Three. Is that longer? Yeah. From Dublin, Dublin. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. Dublin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Belfast. Oh, Belfast. Oh, maybe, oh, that's our company. Belfast, uh, probably a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you can just go right down straight through to go to Dublin mm -hmm. from, from London. We kind of meandered down to it, so yeah. it's kind of, I think well, it's Well, you guys went over the top, so yeah. you know, it's going to be a little bit different experience. But probably most people would do that anyway, because yeah, they go up to the Giant's Causeway and the Game of Thrones uh, area. Yeah. Uh, so def you know, that's something that we didn't really touch on uh, is, the, is, you know, Northern Ireland is a big, you know, draw for those Game of Thrones fans. Which, which we have, we have day tours for Game of Thrones in yes, Northern Ireland. We do. So funny those, enough, for those that are fans of the show, you can do that from either um, Dublin or Belfast. But, um, yeah. And and they are ardent fans. Yeah. I will. And several <laughs> of my friends yeah. are are uh, Game of Thrones travelers. Uh, so anyway. Um, I think that you know one of the good question uh, here as well. Um, some uh, someone had a question is you know we're doing these uh, suggested itineraries like the Wild Atlantic Way or uh, Classic Ireland. Uh, these are suggested itineraries, or you know just what we would do if uh, we had clients who with this certain amount of time and kind of the minimum to a degree of what we would recommend and. And I think there's also a good question here. Uh, people can people do just walking tours and transfers uh, with Avanti? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the only thing that uh, is a requirement uh, really is is that it's a minimum five hundred dollars uh, when you give us a call. Uh, but we don't have that constraint online. So if you just want to add a couple of tours, um, you can do that uh, too uh, online. And one thing we didn't talk about is we also have a really good Irish bed and breakfast program, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, sells quite a lot, um, and it's great because I think, you, you know, not only do you get to spend a place, you know, a, spend the, the night in a lovely place that's going to be, you know, kind of very quintessentially yeah. Irish, but you're going to be staying with a, an Irish family, and they're yeah. going to take very good care of you. Every every um, comment card that I ever read about, you know, oh, the B and Bs, they love them. They, they rave yeah. about them, and you know, these families always bend over backwards. Or, and some of them are like bolt holes with with restaurants as well, mm -hmm. right? And then some of them have pubs right. uh, too. So, and yeah. some of them are kind of small working farms. Yeah. So I mean, if if you have an itinerary that you want to put together, maybe you have family, you're retracing your roots, you know, and you want to stay in a tiny little town somewhere in Ireland that wasn't mentioned in this, in this itinerary, you know. Certainly, you know that's something that we can we can look into, and that's a possibility as part of the bed and breakfast program. Um, so there's a good a good question here uh, with regard, just kind of getting on more on the on the suggested itineraries. Uh, someone had the question of of can we arrange just um, Dublin, Belfast, and Derry, London, Derry, uh, and yeah, that exactly. It, that's uh, that's what we what we do as as much as possible. Uh, getting just making sure that you know we can meet your clients' needs. We're an FIT tour operator, so we can just put it all together. Just going through some of these questions here. Um, Um, yeah, you got something else to say? No, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, it was such a great opportunity and, you know, of course, we'll be very, very thankful to uh, Tourism Ireland for the opportunity oh, that you guys did. And, you know, um, if you guys have an opportunity, um, there is a really great uh, online um, uh, travel trade program, um, like a specialist, Ireland specialist program that you can take. Um, and if you um, ace it and you get gold level, um, I believe you then become uh, eligible for some of their fan trips as well, um, which is a really great opportunity um, for everybody to take, I think. Because, I mean, the, the best way, you can listen to a thousand webinars, but really the best way to be able to sell a destination is to actually go and experience it for yourself. So. 
Exactly. Um, so the uh, I'm gonna. There's a couple of questions that I'll follow up uh, individually on. But there was the the lodge that's on the estate of Ashford Castle is Ash, Ashford Lodge. The lodge at Ashford. Ashford. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Just say, exactly. just give us a call and say, I want that lodge just right by the Ashford Castle, and and they'll take care of you. Um, and uh, you know the uh, the Guinness Storehouse that is in Dublin. Oh yeah, it's yeah. in the middle of Dublin. Yeah, yeah. That's why they have the uh, um, you know the views from up there. It's unparalleled of the whole city. It's uh, 360 degrees. Up there. They have a stop right in front for the hop on hop up buses mm -hmm. too. So I know a lot of people enjoy those. I actually really enjoyed them. I think one of the best ones that I've taken was in Dublin um, because of the commentary. Um, you know, just Irish commentary in general is uh, fantastic. Uh, and um, so you know, that's a really great thing to do is just to buy the hop on hop off bus tour, do a whole circuit, and then get off um, wherever you're interested in, in, in actually visiting. But there is one right in front of the Guinness storehouse. Um, so uh, the Marion is spelt M-E-R-R-I-O-N. Correct. Yeah. Let's see, I can do something. <laughs> nice. Uh, and you know, I think it's important to just quickly uh, talk. You know, we talk about our hotels being centrally located. Uh, you know, when you're looking at hotels, Gabby, uh, or you guys are are advising uh, travel agents of which hotels to match to their clients. Um, I think it's important to note that we're focused on boutique hotels as much as possible. So a lot of these properties are anywhere from 30 to 100 uh, rooms. When, yeah, okay, so, but. yeah, yeah, like a B&B. &B. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, and I think that that's, you know, that's important. You're, you know, you're, when you're looking at hotels, you're like, you know, is this, even before you go and inspect it, is it, is it going to be the type of, of property that we want to, uh, people to look at. And I think the reason for boutique hotels is really to get people, give people the opportunity to have a more local experience and get that personalized service that you're not going to get from those big chain hotels. Unique. Unique. We always look for unique experiences. So that's what we are striving for. All right. So I think we've covered everything. Uh, some of your questions I'm going to um, uh, kind of a, address individually. Um, and uh, there's some good questions as far as you know some follow-up stuff. Maybe I'll get these guys to to help me out. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you guys got a lot of good information. Uh, certainly, if you were having audio uh, issues, um, apologize for that. We'll be sending out a, a follow-up um, uh, email uh, with a link to this recorded webinar that you can share with your colleagues, uh, as well as you know checking in, seeing seeing what's going on. Maybe if you have any questions that. Uh, about it from memory, we can you can just go to the area that uh, this you know the presentation covered, and, and you'll have your answers. Uh, but uh, also, we'll be uh, sending out uh, invites to our other webinars uh, coming up. Uh, typically, send them out about a week in advance of the webinar, uh, so something to look forward to in your inbox. Uh, and we typically will start off with a join us. Uh, so most of you obviously got that, uh, and uh, look forward to having you on the next time. Y'all. Thanks, yeah, Chad. Thank good you. times? All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Have a good afternoon.